Hey, hey y'all. We're back. We're back. And it's the two of us. The two of us. <laughs> and I'm healthy. <laughs> A healthy gal. That song just makes me think of Austin Powers. We get, oh my God, like mini me? Yeah. I'm your mini me. <laughs> your, what's his name? Dr. Evil? Yeah. One million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but we're back, you guys. Yeah, and it feels a little bit different today because we don't have to talk about summer reading so much. And we're prepared. We're, we're going to, but <laughs> right. this is the August podcast, so Ooh. summer reading will be over. When you're listening to this. And school is, I always forget, school's going to start very soon. My kids' school starts a week before I thought they did. I found that out <laughs> yesterday, and I was like, hey guys, sorry. Yeah. It's a week sooner, and they all were like, no, nah. except for Hadley. Hadley is pumped for kindergarten. Yeah. Well, when I was, because I went through SJSD schools, mm-hmm. and when I was a kid, like in kindergarten, we started the day after Labor Day. Right. Which is, you know, early September. Mm-hmm. And then as I went through, by the time I got to high school, we would start school a day earlier every year. Yeah. Until it got to August 16th. Right. And then that's when they just started. I don't know if it's still August 16th. It is like right around there. Yeah. Because it's, it's the day week. before my birthday. Right. It's my birth month. Ooh. I just got, <laughs> we weren't planning on doing this detour today, but I just went to my parents' house last night and they handed me something from the, they're moving to Mexico. So they <laughs> handed me something from a fire safe that I was really hoping was going to be like money. Cash. And it turns out it was like my birth certificate. No. And then just like a bunch of stuff from the hospital when I was born. Oh my God. <laughs> There's like a little thing they put on my leg. When you're like bracelet? And my, my foot print on yeah. a piece of paper. Aww. So I have that now. Oh my gosh. You're like, what am I going to do with this? Last time I went over there, they gave me a lock of my own hair from when I was a baby. <laughs> Parents are so weird. (laughs) I was cleaning out my nightstand when we were moving a couple weeks ago, and I found, like, the hats that Hadley wore in the hospital, like, Mm -hmm. little tiny. And she tried to put it on her head. She's five. (laughs) I was like, Hadley? And she was, like, mad it didn't fit. She's like, it doesn't fit me anymore. I was like, well, I would hope not. Yeah. Like, (laughs) you're five, so. One time I went over when they were getting stuff ready, and they handed me an outfit that I was photographed in as a baby. Oh my gosh. Like a polo, sweater, shorts, shoes. <laughs> I love that they're like, well, we're moving now, so we don't need to remember your childhood. They're leaving everything. They're getting on a plane. And I love going. that. Yeah. Love they're that like, we'll just get it. We'll put some photographs in the suitcase and sayonara. That's so funny. Are they sad that they're not going to see like your brother's kids anymore well my brother is has moved into their he bought their house from them right and has moved in already Mm -hmm. and they are not moved out yet and it is absolute i had to go over there last night it was just four kids yeah it's a lot um all pretty young Mm -hmm. and i think my parents are very very ready to go (laughs) that's what they (laughs) need to come back for christmas the push to go Yeah. yeah My mom's also moving, not out of the country, but she's moving out of the state. She's moving to Florida. Oh, wow. In a couple of months. So I'll also have a Christmas mom. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be real interesting. Well, and she babysits my kids quite a bit. So Send them to Florida. That's what she wants me to do. Like for the whole summer. Do. That's what she wants me to do. <laughs> I don't let my kids really stay the night anywhere, though. Like, I'm like that weird mom that I'm like, nah. Yeah. You can stay home. I just don't see the need of like having them stay the night somewhere if I'm just going to go home and go to sleep. Sure. You know, like if I was going on vacation, <laughs> sure. But your girl's not going on vacation. <laughs> I'm in a permanent staycation <laughs> by choice because I don't want to go around people. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm also going to have a Christmas mom. It'll be interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. The next few months of my life should be a wild ride. <laughs> well, that's exciting about your parents, though. Yeah. You'll have a fun vacation spot. Hopefully. You will. It'll be fun. Your parents are normal, so you can go stay with them. Relatively. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're, the ZD story from last night makes me question if they're normal. Yeah. They just gave me a bag of sauce to make my mm-hmm. own ZD. So funny. I thought they were going to give me ZD. <laughs> <laughs> Such a disappointment being yeah. an adult. Yeah. Well, anything else happening in your your world? Not really. Same. I am going to get a new car when they leave. Oh, yeah. But that's about it. Yes. Which Cafe. is <laughs> very, uh, it's going to be a big change. Mostly because I don't have good air conditioning. My air conditioning Ugh. only works on full blast while you're driving. At least you have that. I have nothing. My air conditioning went out in my escape and my escape is black with black leather interior. (laughs) So when I get into it after work, I'm like in a sauna. Yeah. It's miserable. I won't be getting this new car until September 1st. Oh. So like just in time for the summer to be over. (laughs) Right. That's what I keep telling myself. I'm like one more month, one more month and then it'll be fine and your car will be fine for like the rest of the year. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, no, that's about it. But yeah, I feel that. I don't have anything going on either. Yeah. I moved in. I'm settled in. We're breaking everything in the new house. <laughs> so Scuff up all the walls. Back to normal. <laughs> Throw up on the floor. Yeah. The cat scratched the walls. My daughter <laughs> puked all over her room. My husband dropped a plate last night and chipped the granite countertop. <laughs> I had to leave out the side garage door this morning because the other garage door is broken. <laughs> I mean, they're just really making ourselves at home here. <laughs> so if anybody was wondering, like, oh, should I build a house? Do you have kids? If you answer yes, the answer is no. Are your kids 17 year olds? Years older, older. Right. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. Have at it. But if your kids are under the age of 17... 10 out of 10 don't recommend it because they are going to ruin everything that you love (laughs) and it's like every time they bump into a wall i'm like oh god yep that's gonna leave a mark not on the kid on the wall (laughs) that's another thing my kids are just getting hurt all the time right now (laughs) we live in a neighborhood finally we've never like lived in a neighborhood so they're outside all the time and it's like they don't know how to function (laughs) <laughs> they forgot how to walk because they're watching so much YouTube. <laughs> and so they go outside and they just fall. <laughs> they fall. I'm uh, keeping Band-Aid, the company, like in business <laughs> because I'm buying so many Band-Aids. <laughs> I told you last night, like we we started watching Modern Family together. So everybody comes into my room. And I have three kids and everybody comes to my room. My husband goes, oh, wait, we've got to do a bandage change. I was like, what? What is this? And so everybody literally lined up on my bed. (laughs) They're all three sitting on my bed. And my husband is ripping band-aids off of all of their legs, like going down the assembly line of (laughs) boo-boos. And so it was just like, I just don't understand, like, why? (laughs) Why don't you guys know how to walk? And everybody's just missing skin and there's blood (laughs) everywhere. I just, yeah. So Kelsey's need, been going through it. If you need a Band-Aid, come to my house. <laughs> I've got plenty, lots of Neosporin, like just, <laughs> we got it all. And everyone's like, that burns. <laughs> like, you know what burns? When your leg is amputated because you have an infection. You have gangrene in your knee, boo-boo. So <laughs> sit down. So yeah, that's fun. And my five-year-old's terrified of Band-Aids. Have I told Great. you that? No. Which is just very fitting for Hadley. She's, just pretend there's something else. She's such a weird kid. She's truly me in <laughs> child form. And like when she goes to get a shot, I have to explain to them like, oh, she's not crying because of the shot. Because she starts <laughs> crying before they even start. I'm like, she's not crying because of the shot. She's crying because of the Band-Aid. <laughs> she doesn't want the Band-Aid. Can you just tape a cotton ball up there? Because she'll handle it better. We've had to start doing that. <laughs> It's it's really, really bad. She's terrified of Band-Aids. That's very odd. I know. I know. So, I don't know. It's just a lot of boo-boos happening in my house right now. But that's about as exciting as it gets. Yeah. The rest of it, pretty normal. No more <laughs> hospital visits. Everyone's healthy. That's good. Today. <laughs> we'll see what tomorrow brings. Yeah. COVID's going through through town again. 
Woo. Yay. <laughs> You'd think we'd be prepared by this point, but. No. Womp womp. I was going to try to do a soundboard sound, but I was worried I'd like push the clapping <laughs> or something. <laughs> and that's nothing to cheer about. <laughs> Okay, so um, next up to talk about was the end of the summer reading program. Yeah. We are, oh. by the time you're listening to this, the summer reading program will have concluded, and which means we'll be starting planning for the next year. <laughs> I'll be in meetings when you're listening to this, <laughs> planning for 2023. But the summer reading program went very well this year. Yeah. The numbers were up again um, post severe COVID lockdowns right. and whatnot. Yeah. We were, were able to stay open the whole time, in-person performers, all that. Thank goodness. Yeah. We had a lot on the agenda. And then I was going to ask you how the teen theater has been going, because it got a lot of press. Yes. Um, teen theater camp. This is our first year doing it. It's myself, Molly, and Evelyn from the downtown branch, and... We kind of threw this together in hopes that this will be a reoccurring thing every summer we can put on. Mm -hmm. So we are very much in like trial and error mode, you know, since it's a new program, we don't really know what we're doing. We're just kind of winging it. See what works. Yeah. And so, but it's been going really well. We've had three one day camps. So the first one was about improv. They played improv games, that kind of stuff, did some skits. And then I hosted musical theater. (laughs) <laughs> so we did a deep dive into the history of musical theater and Broadway and blah, blah, blah. We played some fun um, show tune bingo. Oh, wow. Which was a blast. <laughs> and then um, we did a stagehand day where they got to go tour the Missouri Theater. Oh. And see like an actual set being built and that whole thing. I had to miss that one, unfortunately. But um, And then this week... Which, when you listen to this, it'll be... Last week. Last week. Um, We are doing our final week of camp, and we're going to put on a performance this Friday. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the Reader's Theater performance? Yes. So you're not required to memorize your lines. That's why I could never be in a show. Right. I can't memorize anything. Well, we're opening that door for you. Yeah. Wide open. So Reader's Theater, yeah, you don't memorize your lines. You got your script right there, but you do everything else. You're blocking the show, and you've got your props and your costumes and, you know. So, yeah, we started that yesterday. It went really well. We'll see what Wednesday brings. It's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And the performance is Friday. Nice. Yeah. Will the performance be during during hours? or? Yes, it's at 3 o'clock okay. on Friday here at East Hills. So, and we're doing a comedy, so it's really funny. The kids loved it. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that worked out well. We got, I have never taken so many phone calls from the press asking about (laughs) things. There was radio stations, newspapers, Mm -hmm. all kinds of people calling us. That was the one that I did the radio interview for that I was (laughs) disastrously unprepared. They just kind of, they they called you in to the radio (laughs) Yeah, I did not know. <laughs> it was an interview. I just like thought they'd be like, you know, jotting down a couple notes. Yeah. And um they were like live on the air with Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were like, um okay, so if you'll hold tight for just a second, we're going to go ahead and uh, hit record. And I was like, "What?" And then it like clicked over and he like turned into his, "Hey there, this is blah 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 from K95 and we're with Kelsey Weber here." And I was like, "Oh my god." This is really happening, <laughs> and I am... It's live, folks. I'm sure it was great. Yeah, I'm sure it was fine. It was fine. But yeah, theater camp, super fun. I can't wait for next year. I want to do a musical. I'm sure you do. Uh, of course I do. <laughs> uh, of course I do. Find some very dedicated children. Like, let's do Footloose. <laughs> I will be every main character. You guys are villagers <laughs> who don't want me to dance. But gosh darn it, I'm going to. So. <laughs> uh, can you imagine... I can. Every character. (laughs) (laughs) So funny. So, yeah. Yeah. So, summer reading is over, but um, still come to the library. Yeah, we've got some fun stuff cooking for the fall. Yeah, we'll get into the programs for August Mm -hmm. later on. Um, But 
we haven't done book recommendations in a while. <laughs> we both during were like, the summer reading program. We just kind of forgot. It slipped our minds that we had to should talk about what we're reading. Well, and I don't read a ton during the summer. Yeah. I just have so much going on here that when I go home, I just like want to stare at the wall. Yeah. So I don't read a ton, but I did read a book and I've been telling everybody about it. And I feel like I need to lead with, I am always late to the party. Like if something is a <laughs> huge hit, I will listen to it or watch it or read it 10 years later. <laughs> Like, it is guaranteed. It's like when I, my criminal mind phase. Yeah. I wanted to talk about criminal minds so bad. And everybody was like, that came on in 2008. Yeah. Or earlier. Right. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm watching it now. So. I'd like that for TV shows because I want it to be done. Right. It makes it better. And even when you started Criminal Minds, it wasn't done. It wasn't done. So. But yeah. I do like doing that for TV shows. I'm really bad about it. And so if something is really well liked, I'm going to pretend to hate it for about a decade. But <laughs> there have been books on book talk, TikTok, um, that I was like, okay, I'm just going to read it. And one of them came into the library and I was like, I'm just going to grab it, read it real quick, return it. I'm sure I'll hate it. I loved it. Okay. And it was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Okay. So I know you've heard about it. I've seen it. It's one of the... Book talk books are often older. Yes. For some reason. Yeah. It's not like new and upcoming stuff for right. whatever reason. I don't know when it was published. Not within the last couple of years. I know that. Yeah. Um, But it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid, mm-hmm. I believe is her name fantastic book and it's like everything i do not like in a book it's basically historical fiction (laughs) hate it but i loved this maybe i don't hate historical fiction maybe i'm a fraud maybe maybe i just don't know myself i think in you know any genre there's gonna be good and bad sure i'm sure you'll find a sci-fi book you'll love um (laughs) does harry potter count no okay that's fantasy i suppose see i checked that box yeah sci-fi is the only one i haven't dabbled in so is there is there something you can tell us um about this book to not spoil it that's the hard part it's about like a 60s hollywood movie star i think like um oh. marilyn monroe oh and it like now it's present time and she is giving an interview to talk about her life and oh, you know how what she did during the, that time period and her truth but it was so good i read it in like a day and a half hmm. i mean you saw me i just walked around with it all day yeah it was so so good so i want everybody to read it the hold list is very long because everyone is reading it but <laughs> get on the list because it's worth it well book talk has also been interesting because it's brought in in particular a lot of young women Yes. And then... Like early 20s. Yeah. A lot of people getting cards and then checking out Colleen Hoover. Which happens to be on my list to talk about again. (laughs) Because she is another one that I'm like, I'm going to hate it. Uh I hate cheesy romance. And then I read Colleen Hoover and I read it in a day. Oh. So I read another one by her called It Ends With Us. And it was fantastic. Oh. So maybe book talk is on to something. Maybe they are. I don't know. Clearly, <laughs> clearly they did it right with those two. Nice. But you told me you were trying to read fiction. Yeah. I tried to read just like a, an entertainment <laughs> book is how I think of them. Yeah. Because um, I don't know why I was just like, you know what? I'll just try to read one. Yeah. And I have been on a kick lately of, I had watched Homeland, a TV show. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let's find something that's like CIA. Like a political spy, Political, something like that. And I believe the one I've picked up is Vince Flynn. I know it's Vince Flynn. I think it's called Transfer of Power. Okay. And it's supposed, it's like on a bunch of lists of like, you know, these are the best of that kind of like story. 
Yeah. Haven't made it very far into mm-hmm. it. Only yeah. A, a couple of chapters. Hey. Um, but then a whole lot of things started happening, and I did not have time to read it. Sure. Um, but it's been <laughs> the most interesting thing about it is that it's a lot older than I thought it was. When did it come out? I'm gonna say the late '90s. Maybe. Oh my gosh! Before 9/11. Oh wow! So a lot of the things people were worried about before 9/11 yeah. are very interesting. I would imagine. So. And the way people would write about things mm-hmm. 30 years ago, 20 years ago, right? Very interesting. I would imagine. So um, it has it has been interesting so far, and it is you know like fast paced and you know things are just happening there seems to be uh, i think it's there's a book with that character in it before this mm-hmm. because just reading it i'm like oh there's things i should know right there's a backstory yeah okay but uh it has been interesting it's just very of the time mhm and i'm interested to see where that will take me well if that falls flat, I've got a young adult political thriller <laughs> that happens to be on display back in YA. Uh-huh. I won't, I probably shouldn't add that my display is books that I read and hated. <laughs> That's what I have on display in YA right now. Uh-huh. It's anti librarian recommendations. Oh. And I put on display every book I've read back there that uh, was garbage, in my opinion. (laughs) So, but I have a political thriller that features a teenager. Oh, wow. I know you want to read that. Uh, Yeah, reading about teenagers. Your favorite thing. (laughs) And their lives. And their teen angst. Yeah. While at the White House. Super interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, wait. (laughs) There's a, it's not YA, but it's a romance Uh and it's the president. It's a female president and her son Uh and his lover. Who's a prince. Yeah. That book was very popular too. Red, white and royal blue. Yes. You should read that And I thought it was weird that it wasn't YA. It looks YA. It looks like YA, but I think they are, there's another trend right now happening of like that style of book cover yeah it's all like the contemporary (laughs) romance yeah it's penetrating into the adult stuff yes it's very interesting yes and those are all the books that i want to read yeah if i see that i'm like kelsey will read that (laughs) i'll (laughs) see that on kelsey's desk for about six months (laughs) oh well i'm proud of you for reading fiction we'll see how far i get sure it's just when i read i've never read a book the only books like this i've read are i read the uh Dan Brown, <laughs> Da Vinci Code. <laughs> you can't see me, but I'm rolling my eyes. The they were interesting. That made me. It was like. actually the ones he wrote that haven't been turned into movies. Mm-hmm. There was two he wrote before that. Yeah, those are the more interesting ones. Hmm. I don't know if symbologist Robert Langston or whatever his name is, Tom Hanks, is in those two books. I've never seen the movie. I don't think you would like it. Probably not. <laughs> is it starring a teenager? No. Yeah. It's Tom Hanks. Hard pass. <laughs> I do like Tom Hanks. <laughs> There's a rom com written about Tom King, Tom Hanks. <coughs> it's called Waiting for Tom Hanks. Oh, he's been in a lot of rom coms too. Yeah. I hope they make it into a movie and I hope he has a guest appearance. It's a good book. <laughs> for another episode. Yeah. Okay. That was a lot of, I mean, we're just talking about, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, I love to talk about books. Yeah. Speaking of books, let's talk about books that people want to rip off the shelves. Yeah. <laughs> the, more news <laughs> of, <laughs> Woo! of library book banning. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mm-hmm. just kind of been the thing in the news recently. Ugh, I hate um, it. And think there have, tensions have been escalating in certain communities across the country. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's in very, very big cities. Sometimes it's in little tiny towns. Um, It's mostly at school and public libraries, more, more at the school libraries. Right. Um, Which 
you have some experience with. You worked at a Catholic school library. Ooh, so Did I ever. <laughs> There's uh, always interesting things happening there. But there was a couple of things that I wanted to bring out. Um, the New York Times had an article uh, titled, With Rising Book Bans, Librarians Have Come Under Attack. So this is something we talked about months ago as being a possibility as the book banning efforts started to ramp up. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to read a little bit from this article. You can find it on NewYorkTimes.com. Um, so it says, as highly visible and politicized book bans have exploded across the country, librarians, accustomed to being seen as dedicated public servants in their communities, have found themselves on the front lines of an acrimonious culture war with their careers and personal reputations at risk. They have been labeled pedophiles on social media, called out by local politicians, and reported to law enforcement officials. Some librarians have quit after being harassed online. Others have been fired for refusing to move books, remove books from circulation. So that's quite an escalation Yeah. in the other things we have been talking about with the book banning. Right. Um, going on. So addressing book challenges has always been part of the job, but efforts to ban books have spiked in recent months, reflecting a clash over whether and how to teach children about issues like LGBTQ rights and racial inequality. The Library Association tracked 1,597 books that were challenged in 2021. That's individual books being challenged, not the number of challenges. Right. And that's the highest number of books... Um, since the organization began tracking bans 20 years ago. Um, these ch Now, the, here's something interesting. These challenges are coming from both the left and the right. There might be objections to LGBTQ characters or racial slurs in Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the thing is, the book bans have always been... Um, Less intense, but um, a little less politicized because there's people on the left and the right that had problems with different things in different books. Right. And just going on here. Some of the conflicts have gotten so heated that community members have tried to seek criminal charges against librarians. Um, Mrs. Hicks, it's talking about a library in Mrs. Hickson's district in New Jersey. A com in her district, a complaint was filed to the Clinton Township Police Department about obscene materials in a library book. The Hunterdon County Prosecutor's Office said none of the information it received indicated criminal conduct. In Granbury, Texas, a county constable opened an investigation about books available in a high school library after receiving a complaint. So law enforcement is getting involved, mm -hmm. and depending on where you are in the country... And the, you know, politics of, you know, people like sheriffs are elected. Right. They are political positions can have an effect on the outcome of those, uh, you know, lawsuits. Mm -hmm. And then down lower, they've got another librarian. Tanya Riles quit her job as the assistant director of the Jonesboro Public Library in Craighead County, Arkansas, in February after her library board introduced a new slate of policies, including requiring board approval for every new book acquired in the children's collection, <laughs> which oh boards meet like once a month. Right. Can and they you want imagine? to approve. We, you know, I buy 60 books mm -hmm. for nonfiction. Children's is probably buying... 200 books a month mm -hmm. and they have to individually approve each one um the policies were voted down but the vitriol she encountered online became too much there were comments about this is quoting her there were comments about library staff calling us groomers and pedophiles and saying we needed to be fired we needed to be jailed we needed to be locked up that all the books needed to be burned she said it got to a certain point where i thought do i want to live here is this something i can subject myself to that is so sad. Another librarian that quit. And then here towards the end of the article, it says libraries also face increasing pressure from legislators who are crafting new laws and procedures intended to make it easier to remove books that are challenged. This is at state level or local level. 
At least five states, including Arizona, Georgia, and Kentucky, have passed laws that change the way libraries handle complaints about material or the way library board members are appointed, according to Every Library, a political action committee for libraries. Many states have laws that shield teachers, researchers, and librarians from prosecution so they can use educational materials that some might consider objectionable. Those laws are being challenged. To some librarians, the moment has been especially jarring because the pandem- when the pandemic restrictions were in place, they were hailed as heroes for delivering books and laptops to students at home. Now, said Audrey Wilson-Youngblood, a library service coordinator in Texas, librarians are seen by some as villains. That just makes me so sad. Yeah. So things are ramping up a little bit. Yeah. And we just need to be aware of that. Right. And the other thing that I brought with us today is the American Library Association puts Mm -hmm. out every year a State of America's Libraries report. Okay. Which is like, you know, the State of the Union the president does every year. Mm -hmm. Like just a snapshot of what things what's going on what's the news right so we'll get more into that at some point um there's a whole lot of articles in there about what's going on across the country but yeah. they did have a little infographic for censorship by the numbers mm-hmm. and so i was actually surprised to see um for book challenges that 44 percent are happening at school libraries but 37 percent are happening at public libraries we're so lucky that like we haven't been subjected to that yet. Not in a in a serious way, and we do have you know a process for going about them and right. Blah 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 blah. But that's not something we deal with on like a weekly basis. No, not even monthly. No. And then also eighteen percent at schools themselves, mm-hmm. and then one percent at academic. It'd be a good good time to be an academic librarian. They don't For have, sure. They're not putting up with a lot of political stuff right now. Career change. <laughs> and then they uh, they were reporting who initiates these challenges, mm-hmm. and they have it at thirty nine percent parents, and twenty four percent patrons. Now, I'm assuming that the parents is in refer- reference to the school libraries. Yeah. Whereas when it just says patrons, it's public libraries. Right. That's probably the same people. I would imagine parents, so. patrons, right? It's probably parents of kids that are patrons at the library. My thing is in the public libraries. As a parent, mm-hmm. there are a lot of things. For instance, my son and I—he's ten—got into an argument yesterday while I was here at work via text because he wanted to play Sims and he wants to play Sims so bad. And I'm like, "You're still not," you know. He's right there on that age where I'm like, "I know you're. You know what it is." I know you know some inappropriate things. Uh I don't want to know that you know. Uh Uh-huh. You know? So, I'm like, you're not quite ready for Sims yet. Am I writing to EA Sports or whatever the heck to be like, (laughs) shut it down. (laughs) Take it from the market. My kid can't play it, so nobody can. No. I just say, hey, not for you yet. Yeah. You know? So, it's like, yeah, that's my take as a parent, and I know that I am not the person to take parenting advice from (laughs) i am yeah making mistakes all the time but just because it's not right for your kid doesn't mean it's not right for another kid right because my 10 year old son has friends that play grand theft auto 10 year olds yeah playing grand theft auto and i'm like no not happening i played grand theft auto when i was in second grade Okay. That's really bad. <laughs> the times were different. <laughs> times were different. 2002. <laughs> I'm sure I was also playing Grand Theft Auto at a very inappropriate age. But like, <laughs> you know. But yeah, it's just like. That it was new. Sure. Our parents didn't know. Yeah. They couldn't YouTube it. Yeah. And I was at my friend's house. Also didn't know. Yeah. Right. That's why I'm like, no, you won't be going to that kid's house because I know what y'all are going to be doing and it ain't happening. But yeah, I I just, I don't, I don't understand it as a parent. It's a tough, tough thing. Yeah. And they also are tracking, um, what's being challenged, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. It's 82% are book challenges. Okay. So then there's also people have been challenging 5% programs. Mm Mm-hmm. 
four uh, percent are for displays or exhibits. Two mm percent -hmm. are films being shown, and then seven percent other, okay. which includes um, filtering, like we, you know, have filters on the computers upstairs. Mm -hmm. Access databases, magazines, online resources, artwork, social media, music, pamphlets, student publications, and reading lists. Okay. So people are even like taking a reading list and saying you can't i cannot you know handle that and then they have one of those little word clouds right <laughs> for um reasons for challenges and the by far biggest one is sexually explicit right that seems to be the number of one thing people are going with is that it's sexually explicit right um and then there's a some other big critical race theory LGBTQIA, obscene, woke, uh, profanity, indoctrinating kids, drugs, anti-police. Mm -hmm. These are the sort of things that are being listed as reasons for challenges. Right. So just thought I would throw that out there and we'll take a deeper dive into the state of, pub of American libraries Yeah. at a later date. Next episode, we'll study it come back at yeah. you with some info <laughs> don't hold me to that <laughs> I will. well speaking of programs that we hope you don't try to challenge yeah please don't challenge please don't challenge, please don't challenge our vintage book sale <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so upcoming in august we have a uh, less intense programming schedule because summer reading is over right but we are still here to supplement your child's education definitely um, i would say we go a little light on the programming in august because we're all exhausted yeah because most of us that program are on the summer committee summer reading committee yeah that's it that was weird i couldn't form a sentence <laughs> um but so yeah we're a little wore out but we're still gonna come at you with some programs yeah and then this isn't so much a program, but we are going to be having the Vintage and Collectible Book Sale. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be here at East Hills. I believe it's going to be set up in the conference room. Um, and that is going to be on August 4th and 5th, um, starting, I believe, at noon. Oh, um, no. It's going to be 9 to 5. Yeah. Both days, August um, 4th and 5th. Okay. And that's fine. And I love that. That's I your the, jam. I love the vintage book sale. Mm -hmm. If you want to come get some stuff that's going to look cool on a shelf, regardless of content. I might have to stop by for yeah. my new bookshelves. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Put on by the one and only Crystal Stone. Yes. And this will be supporting the friends of the library. Yeah. Who support the library. Right. So, if you want to have a good summer reading program. <laughs> right. This is where we get some money from. Perfect. Um, but yeah, we've got some other cool stuff happening. We've got a lot of events for kids, book buddies, the reading dogs will be back here yep. at East Hills. We've got some always the first Saturday of the month. Yes, always. So we've got uh, some family movie nights, which we're going to be watching sing too. And those are super, super fun. Yeah. They, they really go all out. Oh, Miss Elizabeth. Yeah. In the children's department. Yeah. Super fun. Um, and then we have a really popular program happening at the downtown branch. Um, it's called Adulting 101, and this is hosted by Evelyn. And like I said, it's at the downtown branch. It's intended for teens and adults, and each segment is going to feature, you know, an adult life skill that you should know and you may not know. Yeah. So the first one is going to be on August 10th at 4 p.m., and that is featuring... Um, Jerry Arnold Cook from Missouri Western Career Center, and they're going to be talking about job searching. And the second one for this month is on August 24th, and that is going to have Chef John Reith um, showing you some cooking basics. Super fun. I probably should go to that one. <laughs> I do not cook. Well. You know. But another... Um, thing we've got going on for kids is yoga for kids we are doing this um let's see i know it's a reoccurring program is it the second saturday of the month i 
I think yes. it is. I yes. think it's the second Saturday. It will of the be month. on August thirteenth. Yeah, this, this one is August thirteenth at ten a.m. Registration is required, and they do ask that you bring a yoga mat if you have one. And this is intended for kids ages five to twelve. And um, there's an actual yoga instructor that comes in and teaches yoga. So that's super fun. I tried to get my kids to do it, and they were like, "No, we don't like to leave the house." Well, they got to learn some balance, apparently. So. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, they may not fall <laughs> off their scooters so darn much if they would come to yoga. Good thought. I'll tell them that. And I, I have to introduce the creme de la creme Ooh. of programming of all libraries in America. Bingo night. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and the host. Ooh, baby. Featured in national magazines for yeah. hosting abilities. I don't actually know if I will be there this month oh. because um, I'm going to be so busy on my tour talking right. about my programs. Your TEDx talk. Yeah. Just about, about bingo. How to, yeah, real, you know, you got to <laughs> roll the, the cage in a certain way. You got to give a good shake. Yeah. Got to so give a good shake. Got to give a good show. You got to put it on the anticipation. Yep, yep, What's it going to be? B9? Right. No. 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 It's C20. You're wrong. There's no C in bingo. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but yeah, bingo night um, hosted by me is going to be on Monday, August 15th at 6 p.m. This is for adults and we have prizes and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. We have actually been having a really good time at bingo night. It's fun. Yeah. It's a blast. And Pokey Club. Ooh. will be on my birthday Yay. if you want to stop and say happy birthday. Come celebrate with Jacob. <laughs> August 17th, um, hosted by Miss Sarah. Yep. She's going to have all the usual insane amount of things to do. She's been preparing yes. since the last one. Yes. Um, but this is for all ages, but they do ask that anyone 10 and under be accompanied by an adult. Yes. Um, what else do we have to talk about? The We've got a book club downtown. Yeah, the Friends Book Club that Chelsea runs downtown. Their mm-hmm. book this month is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Clune. I'm really <laughs> glad you pronounced that title. Cause, <laughs> you um, didn't Cerulean? I don't know that I'd be able to do that one <laughs> off the top of my hat. Um, but then another awesome program we have at also the downtown library is True Crime Time. And this one is Career Girls Murders. And this is taking place on August 25th at 6 p.m. Hosted by Jen. I love true crime. (laughs) I'm on a break, though. Yeah, you just said you were burnt out on it. I am. But I still love it. It's still deep in your heart. Yep. It's one of my passions. Crime. And then we always have to mention Jenny's. Always. Virtual Murder She Read Cozy Mystery Book Discussion. This month in August, we will they will be reading Pride, Prejudice, and Peril by Katie Oliver. And as always, the author will be joining for discussion. Because Jenny knows everyone. <laughs> Literally everyone. Um, but yeah, that's what's happening here. Lots of fun programming. Like I said, we are taking it a little lighter in August just to recoup. Yeah. But we are coming back full steam ahead in the fall. And there's, of course, always going to be, we've got Tricky Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays. You know, we right. don't mention those every time, but there's always something going on. Almost daily. We've got something yes. happening at one of the branches. If you just check our website and mm-hmm. check the web calendar, you will see something that tickles your fancy. <laughs> is that the saying? It is a saying. I don't know if it's right. It works. Sounded good. All right. All right. Well, this has been nice. We will see you in the oh my gosh (laughs) i forgot to talk about my halloween decorations next month oh you'll hear all about it august is a little too early speak for yourself (laughs) to talk about rude (laughs) (laughs) they did the mash they did the monster mash all right bye